Hi folks. God, I don't know if it's this way where you live. It's a gorgeous day here in the Northeast USA. It's sunny. It's like by noon, it's going to be sandals and like shorts weather. Um, totally. I mean, it's an El Nino year. So things on in my part of the planet are have been unseasonably warm but I'm not complaining because this is this is great I love 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 it <clears throat> before you know it it'll be farmers market season you know walk down see what they got people out with their dogs and just happiness so um so today um i'm gonna do i'm gonna show you i'm gonna give you a whip update one whip update i'm gonna show you two ffos that i managed to get done um i'm going to do a haul which will be last um, and I'm going to do two tags. I'm going to do Adele's For Reals, though, tag. Um, and uh, shout out to Trisha for uh, bringing that tag to my attention. Because um, I don't follow Adele, but I do now. So, good stuff. And also, Kate, the Queen of Starts. Hi, Kate. I don't think you follow me, but I follow you and I think you're awesome. Um, pearl tag, which I really love her, the imagery she chose for that tag, just like, you know, the irritant, but you end up with a pearl. It's just, I don't know, I like, even though the vegan in me is like, yeah, and you have to kill the oyster to get the pearl, but I'm not going to be a buzzkill. I'm not going to be a buzzkill. It was a great idea. <laughs> Uh, and so following the tags, I will show you my haul, which is just some patterns because I discovered eBay. Um, but then again, I'm not really a big spender and shopper, so I feel like I'm kind of proud of myself that I spent less than $30 and got one, two, three, four or five patterns. Um, so... Yay. I have to burp again. Welcome to my channel. I burp. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. What comes first? Whip updates. So, remember when I was whinging that uh, I went to Walmart, which I never do, to look for a pattern because I had to have it and I went to a Walmart and it was just like I couldn't find it. Anyway, uh, there was a Walmart actually closer to my home than I realized and I found it! <laughs> so this was my leap day start. So this will get put in my rotation when I figure out when And uh, I, th I threw out the crappy floss that came with it and I'm using DMC B5200. Um, and uh, so this is what I got done on Leap Day. You know, I'm not having as much of an issue with the Black Ada as I thought I would. And I think that's two, f the reasons for that are twofold. One, um, I stitched, I was been stitching like when I don't have a electronic pattern I generally stitch in my living room there's an awful lot of natural light in there it's great that really helped during the daytime also um I haven't stitched on Ada in a really long time and so it's just like oh there are the holes like if this were black linen or even weave I would be screwed <laughs> but I'm having an easier time and I'm using a Knit Fast Die Warm. You can't. See. Oh, hello, Glare. I'm using a Knit Fast Die Warm 
needle minder from minding my minders. So yay! Happy about that. You know what? I'll just put you away. I'll put. You know what? I'm just gonna put it away now because if I don't do it now, stuff things. Um, the only other whip update I have to show you is Master and the Macabre. Master and the Macabre is going to, you know what, screw it. I'll put this away later. Um, where to put you? Where to put you? Uh, let's put you here for right now. Okay. Um, Master and the Macabre is going to be playing a big role in the month of March because first, Stitch Mania was having this um, It's Not Easy Being Green stitch along for the month of March. And initially I was going to bounce around between doing the green stuff in Master of the Macabre and working on um, Autumn in My Garden because there's green in that. And also finishing up my latest uh, Hard Anger coaster, which is green. And then, Katie, was it you? I don't remember. Someone had this idea to like do like mostly monogamous march where you only stitch on one uh, one whip. And if you're a member of like some mystery salves like Frosted Pumpkin and Clouds Factory, obviously you get a pass because come on. And I thought, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. but then I thought, you know, If I work on Master and Macabre all month, I'd be really damn close to having a finish. And I like those. So I'm going to try to do mostly monogamous march with, uh, with Master and the Macabre. I sh you know what? I'm not going to take it out of the hoop because I've been working on it. Um, the last time you saw this, the house was not filled in. So that is what I have been working on mostly. So this is like a week's worth. Here and there. I haven't been stitching on it every day, but um, so yeah, working on the House of Usher. So far, so good. I really like this pattern. I mean, there's a lot of solid color, and that can be a pain, but... I don't know, I was really lucky that I started working on filling in the roof when, um... right before Force Awakens came out, because it's not like my family needs an excuse to marathon Star Wars movies, but, um marathoning Star Wars movies because you're gonna go see <laughs> you're gonna go see the new one in theaters is a really good way to just mindlessly work on uh, filling in solid color anyway so that's what's going on with Master and the Macabre right now uh, yeah what else is going on I also um, officially joined a round robin that's going to be kicking off in April. So I'm kind of sort of in the process of putting things together. And uh, uh, this is my very first round robin and I'm really excited. And it's a small one, which I, which is nice because it'll give me an idea of whether, you know, I like round robins. And if I don't, it's only five months. So, um, the theme is, uh, subversive cross-stitch. <laughs> and, uh, I chose a pattern that I love. And if you are watching with children who can read, um, maybe say, hey, look, a squirrel or something for a second, because I'm going to show you <laughs> a picture uh, not not the pattern, obviously, but I'm going to show you. That's what it looks like. Okay, 
You can stop distracting your child. Um, you can find this on Etsy. Um, the designer's name is Steph X Stitch. I will link below. Um, um, this is going to be fun. Uh, and there's only four colors. So um, I'm going to swap out for the green. I'm going to swap out a week's dye works and for the little um, uh, light brown bits around the border. I'm going to swap out another week's dye works just because I can and I want to. So hooray. I'm looking forward to seeing other people's choices. Very much so. Okay, FFOs and then tags. Um, I only got two done so far, but that's okay. So I finished Kiddo's Hoop. And this is Romantic Moonlight from Cross Stitch Collection Magazine's um, 2015 issue. And I miffed a little bit, I think. Uh, so the instructions said to cut down the fabric and then use double-sided tape to uh, stick the remaining fabric to the inside of the hoop. Can anyone recommend a good double-sided tape that works well with fabric? I got some just because it was at the store and I was in a rush. Um, some Elmer's double-sided tape and it's not really like I, I have to like pressed down, but it's not going to hold very well. Um, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I mean, it's going to hang on a kid's wall. Like, <laughs> no one's going to be staring at the back and like, oh, the fabric's coming up. But I'm a perfectionist sometimes. So anyway, that's cute. She loves it. We're going to figure out a place to hang it. And then, this I'm really super proud of. Um, many thanks to Tara C. and her framing tutorials. I framed all by myself um, my sister's birthday present, which is uh, Lizzie Kate, Do Small Things with Great Love. Super happy, got the frame at Michael's. Um, just that can, there's, no, there's no glass in here. Because um, I wanted to try, it still has the original back, which is really kind of um, uh, squished in here. But I managed to make it work because I just wasn't really up for trying to finish the back with backing paper and hardware and stuff. Uh, so there's no glass, but that's okay. It's been scotch guarded and everything. Uh, really, really happy with this. Um, so yeah, my sister and my dad are coming to visit tomorrow and staying overnight. And, uh, they'll be leaving on my sister's birthday so I can give this to her. I am really excited. Um, I'm super stoked for her. She's uh, finishing up her master's degree um, in counseling and she's planning on moving to the Philadelphia area when she's done. So at the end of the summer, my sister will be close by and I am super psyched. So, hurrah. And, all right, I think that's all the cool stuff I had to show you. Let's, let's find these tags. <clears throat> okay. All right. We're going to do Kate's pearl tag first because those are the questions I wrote down first. Uh, okay, question one on Kate's pearl tag is what irritates you the most about cross stitch in general and why? 
Um, now, obviously, if cross stitch really irritated me a lot, I wouldn't do it. Okay, you know, it's like, I, I think everyone is with me there, you know. Um, things that irritate me the most, probably giant blocks of color. There's this phenomenon in knitting that I can kind of see carrying over, carrying over into cross stitch. Um, we call it the black hole of knitting, where you're knitting and you're knitting and you're knitting and your ball of yarn is getting smaller, but it seriously does not feel like you have made any tangible pros uh, progress on what you're knitting. Like it doesn't look any bigger, even though you know it has to. It has to have gotten bigger because you've been knitting and the ball of yarn is getting smaller. So progress is happening, but it you, you can't tell. Um, yeah, the last time that really happened to me, I knit my partner this uh, really long cowl. Um, it was last winter. Yeah, it was last winter. And uh, yeah, we had the black coal of knitting going on. It was just... And I can see that carrying over, and I have seen it carry over in my personal stitching life with like large blocks of color. Um, I can see it happening, especially in a larger project, I, like in a haid, like a full-sized haid, I could see that happening to me. Uh, so that would probably be what irritates me the most about stitching in general. Okay, question two. What designer irritates you the most and why? Okay, I'm gonna preface this by saying I am not judging you if you really like this designer. I generally really like this designer, but I have beef with this designer, especially recently. And, uh, If what I'm about to say is something that really didn't occur to you until, like, I mentioned it, please don't get defensive, okay? Because we all have our blind spots, all right? I am not judging you, all right? If I'm judging you, let's be honest, I'll tell you. <laughs> Nora Corbett. Or Nora Corbet. Which is it, okay? Because Diane Monda Stitches pronounces it Nora Corbet. Um, and some people say Corbett. And Pennsylvania, the state I live in, our previous governor had a surname that was spelled the same way. And he pronounced it Corbett. So, anyway. Aside. Okay. I'm going to say this and you're not gonna get offended for me pointing out something that might not have occurred to you. The word gypsy is an ethnic slur. Yes, it is, okay? And it's not cool, okay? So, yeah. That's my beef. My phone's all like, oh boy, Julicious is getting heated. We better turn off. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Not cool, Nora. Not cool. Okay, number three. What stitch irritates you and why? Okay, so far... I'm going to say, oh, it's still the French knot. And maybe I just need to practice more. Um, my, it's probably definitely I need to practice more. Um, I feel like I have difficulty um, getting them to be consistent. Like, especially if I have to do several at a time. Um... It's still 
gives me some hassle. Like, like say with, with Master of the Macabre, um, it's a beautiful French knot, but it's not centered. So, and I was like, screw it. The eye is looking off that way. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to fuss with that. So yeah. I don't feel quite so bad because I know quite a few stitchers who have been stitching way longer than I have who are not French knot fans, so. But that's it. <clears throat> what irritates you, question four, what irritates you about non-stitchers? No names. Um, I'm gonna kind of broaden that out to non-crafters. Because as a knitter, and those of you who knit or crochet or something might have, have probably experienced this too. You know, you're sitting and say you're knitting socks. Yeah, you're knitting socks. And someone who thinks they are very clever will come up to you and say, you know, you can get them for a dollar a pair at Walmart. What the hell do they expect us to say? Like, are you serious? Really? Re re really? I. Do you have any idea how long it takes to knit a pair of socks? And this is when you tell me? No. Jeez. Uh, and I haven't really encountered that with non-stitchers yet. I would be terribly surprised if it does not happen to stitchers, but there's this, there's been a shift in the past 150 years or so, in the U.S. anyway, where we've gone from the notion that buying something when you can make it used to be considered wasteful, and now it's like making something when you could buy it is considered wasteful. And I, I don't think that's a good direction to be going in. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm broadening that to non-crafters instead of non-stitchers because like as a knitter, like if someone were to give me or show me a cross stitch or an embroidery or a needlepoint that they've been working on, I would absolutely appreciate it because I mean, people who make stuff for fun know how much time goes into that. Like a pair of socks is like roughly an average pair, 60,000 stitches. Okay, you're not just giving someone a pair of socks. Like that's your time and your life, you know. Um, and it's the same with like, I don't know how many hours I've worked on this. A lot. Um, so, yeah, in general, uh, non-crafters kind of don't understand, um, just the time and energy that goes into things. And yet these are people who will, like, go fishing. Fishing, which, if given, if I'm understanding correctly, fishing much of the time is just standing in a river. And I'm not going to judge you if that's how you like to spend your time. But, come on now. I can't take credit for that comparison, by the way. The yarn harlot made that fishing comparison for me. Um, so yeah. Question five, last pearl tag question. What irritates you about other stitchers? No names. I don't know yet. Most of the stitchers I know are pretty cool, pretty chill. Um, I would say, I don't think this is a stitcher thing. I think it is a people on the internet thing. And some of these people happen to be stitchers. Um, drama irritates me. Um, I was a member of 
a Facebook group that was stitching related. And I was a member of that group for less than 48 hours. And uh, yeah, drama bombs all over the place. And I thought, you know what? These people are pissing me off and I don't even know them. And this is supposed to be fun. And this is the only life I get. I could be having a picnic, but instead I'm getting annoyed at people on a Facebook group on the internet. I'm done. Goodbye. <sighs> um, you will find that on virtually any group dedicated to any subject on the internet though. So I, I'm i not going to say that that is a soul stitcher thing. Um, and I know, as in with many crafts, there are always the people who are like, this is the way you have to do things. And if you're not doing it that way, you're wrong. Which is crap. I've not personally encountered any of those people, but I know many of you have. So there's no stitching police. Do what you want. Um, anyway, thank you, Kate. That was fun. I feel so much better now having just like put frustrations out there. Probably going to lose a lot of subscribers for that Nora Corbett crack, though. I kind of don't care. Um, <laughs> okay, Adele's for reals, though, tag. Let's see, how many questions do we have? Ten? All right, we can do this. We can totally do this. Okay. Question one. For reals, though, what level of stitcher do you consider yourself to be? Confident beginner. Not quite comfortable with uh, categorizing myself as intermediate yet. Um, there's still a lot I don't quite know. You know, uh, specialty stitches in me are still trying to, you know, we're still like circling each other. You know, like Wild West shootout style. Do that? Does that involve circling? Anyway, we're still, still feeling each other out. Um, although I have purchased um, those little specialty stitch mini patterns that Stitchy Box and Northern Expressions Needleworks have been putting out. And um, I'm really digging the way, I haven't tried them yet, but I've looked at the one, which I think is Smyrna's and Islets or something. I don't know. But they have really clear instructions, so I am hopeful. Um, but yeah, confident beginner for right now. As of early March 2016, confident beginner. Question two. For reals, though, how many whips and UFOs do you honestly have? I have two UFOs um, that I honestly don't know that I'm ever going to go back to. I think one of them might end up on a stash unload because uh, it was a kit. And I have seven whips. Um, two of those are currently in the naughty corner, but those two are going to be focused, my focus in uh, July's wine and whips. So I will get, I will definitely finish one of them. Uh, those patterns, for the record, are my wedding sampler and uh, the story time sampler. Story time sampler will definitely get finished in July. So. Question three. Are you enabled easily? Yes and no. Um, I don't often succumb to peer pressure because that's just not me. Um, if I want to be enabled, you can enable me. Mostly because, like, I want to buy that. And then I talk to, like, you know, Katie the Stash Queen and Garrett and uh, and Kim. And be like, should I buy this? And they're like, 
yes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, so I was like, it's more like if I'm already like 99.999% sure, like, yeah, I'm going to buy this thing. And then just sort of just like, hey guys, should I do this? And they're like, of course. So, um, now, I don't know if, if enabling counts as like seeing a pattern I really like and then putting it on a one, two, three stitch wish list. I don't think that counts because it's, I'm not actually running out and purchasing it right then. Um, so, but yeah, in generally, I'm only enabled, easily enabled when I want to be. Um, question four, for reals though. Do you suffer from SADD, Stitcher's Attention Deficit Disorder? Um, I don't know. Like, I might have kind of felt myself encroaching on that, but then I decided that I would just throw together a rotation, and that helps a lot. Um... So maybe a little bit, but rotations kind of put a lid on it. <clears throat> Five, for reals. Have you ever finished a full coverage project like a Hade or Tilton Crafts, etc.? And if no, how far did you get? Uh, no, because I've never started a Hade or a big full coverage project. Um, I don't know that this necessarily counts as full coverage because it's so itty bitty bitty, but uh, this peacock feathers thing that I, um, this was my parking experiment that I, I want to finish because I hate having things that aren't finished, but I can't find the magazine that the pattern's in. I know it's around here somewhere, but you know, I moved in the middle of this, so we'll find it eventually. So that's the that's the only thing that would really count at all as full coverage, even though it's a coaster. <laughs> it's a little bigger than a coaster, but you know what I mean. Um, so that's my answer to that. <laughs> uh, question six. For reals, though, do you enjoy confetti? I don't think I've ever actually experienced true confetti. And... Um, I'm not really intimidated by it because I taught myself parking and I think parking's really cool and it feels like that would make the confetti at least tolerable. So, maybe. Number seven, for reals though, how many finishes do you have this year and how does it compare to number two? I have three finishes this year. Um... Stack that against seven whips and two UFOs. I, I'm pretty happy with that. Because um, I'm gearing up to have more finishes this too. I'm definitely going to finish Master of the Macabre this year. I'm definitely going to finish Storytown Sampler this year. I'm definitely going to finish um, this this year. So I'm good with that. For right now, anyway, I still haven't decided uh, what level of participation um, I'm going to be. I still have not decided uh, how much I'll be participating in Stitch Mania. Um, just because I've got some personal stuff going on probably in early May that might mess things up a bit. But uh, so we'll see. But I'm pretty good with, with that right now. Question eight. Are you bothered by your answer to the last question? Would you rather have it larger or smaller? I'm good with my answer to the last question. I mean, obviously, would I like to have more finishes? Yeah, I like them. Um, I stitch because, well, A, it's therapeutic, but B, then I've made something pretty that I can either give to someone or hang somewhere. And it's decorative and it's nice. So, um, but bothered? No, no. 
Nine. Do you have any dirty little stitchy secrets? I'm glad you put stitchy in there. Um, <laughs> uh, any dirty little stitchy secrets? Yeah. I don't railroad my stitches. Firstly, because no one ever showed me how. And secondly, because even if someone did, I'd be like, that's boring. Um, so far, I don't think my stitching suffers for it. Honestly. Uh, secondly, don't tell anyone. Sometimes when I'm stitching on my stuff, I don't always wash my hands before I start stitching. Like, I, I look at my hands and I'm like, yeah, they're clean. Um, like, obviously, if I have just been cooking or, you know, doing art with my kid or, excuse me, or something, then yes, I will wash my hands. But in general, barring extenuating circumstances, I don't wash my hands before I pick up my stitching. Last question, question 10. I dare you to show me your messiest back. Which back is my messiest? You're not messy. Um, let's look at the peacocks with parking. That's probably my messiest back so far. Yep. That's it. So thank you, Adele and Kate. That was fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some patterns I bought. And uh, if you don't like that, you can leave. <laughs> but if you wanna see. Okay. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm only disappointed in one of these. And actually I'm gonna show you that first because it's right here. I bought for a song on eBay. Because I'm trying to like Brooks Books. I'm trying, I really am. I got a uh, pattern for the spirit of the sugar plum fairy angel ornament. It's a lot more pink than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it would make a nice maybe something for my mother-in-law and now I'm just like oh this might go in a giveaway. So spoiler alert. So my camera says I can only talk for 18 minutes. Okay I think we can do the rest of this within 18 minutes. Um, so yeah the rest of this is hard anger. And a uh, very advanced hard anger, except for one, but uh, I can dream. So from Nordic Needle, at least that's where the pattern originated from, I got this kit that actually just included a needle and fabric and not the charm, but that's okay, I'll figure it out. Um, it's called Blue Bouquet. And this I have a prayer of actually being able to do right now. So, I need to figure out something for the middle, because as I said, the, char the charm is not included. But, uh, burn that bridge when I get to it. So, the next purchase was actually a twofer. What I really wanted was this by uh, the Victoria Sampler, um, the Heirloom Birth Sampler which I originally saw when uh, Diane of Mondot Stitches made this for her youngest. Um, eventually I will do this for my kiddo. Um, the options are of course blue and pink. I'm going to probably do a lavender um, or let her pick. So, but yeah, this has uh, some Rhodes butterflies and uh, the cloister blocks look fairly non-threatening. Um, not sure about the dove's eyes with the wrapped bars, but we will see. 
uh, silk ribbon embroidery. Ah! We'll see. I don't have to do this anytime soon, um, but it will get done. And I don't like either of the little verses they have here. I'm probably going to do a Bob Dylan song. Are you surprised? Um, anyway, this is what I wanted. It came with uh, the Lilac Chatelaine sampler, uh, which, you know, has a sampler and this little rolly thingy and some ornament, an ornament or two, and this bell pole type thing. So, stash enhancement. It's cool. And then the last thing I got, which I'm really excited about, um, if you watch uh, Mrs. Milky Bar Kid, you know she did the um, Four Elements series that uh, the Victoria Sampler did, and I think they're out of print. Um, I got the first in the series. I am currently watching Like a Hawk, another one in the series, but the auction doesn't end until like for another like 13 days and I like to bid right at the end. Um, so this is Crystal Blue Waters. I love this series. Also very advanced for someone like me, but I don't care. They're beautiful. I want them. So yeah, if you see any of the other uh, patterns in this series, maybe give me a heads up. Maybe. So, yeah, that's my little haul. Um, I'm also expecting a package from Jottery Designs any day now, I hope. Maybe. Maybe not till next week. I don't know. The one beef I have with her is she'll say, hey, your package has been shipped, but there's no tracking information or anything like that. Uh, maybe Royal Mail just doesn't do things that way. I don't know. But, um... I just got some thread, some cottons. Um, meh. So, do I have anything else to mention to talk about? No. Okay. So, thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, I hope if you're having lovely weather, you can get outside and enjoy it, if you're able to do so. Um, and, uh, hope stitching goes well, and I'll Catch y'all later, okay? Peace.